if you are someone who aspires to make something relevant or impactful in the activity or business, then maybe try it and fail. Or maybe you never even tried and you ask yourself, how am I going to start? What should I do? Is it even a good idea? Well, today I want to share with you an inspiring story that will answer all those questions for you, hopefully. The story is that of a company we all know today as Netflix. This is not a fully detailed, in deep, concrete story of Netflix. But I have assembled the key points and moves the founders Ray Destins and Mark Randolph have made from the idea of Netflix to what it has become today. How they reacted while facing adversity, what has worked for them and can work for you. And some of the things that didn't work for them along the journey, so you don't find yourself making the same mistakes. And in the end, decide for yourself if you're choosing to give up or not in whatever activity you're doing or want to do. This is the second episode of The Big Minds following the first one I made on Apple. If you didn't watch it, make sure you go watch it before you watch this one or you can watch this one and at the end, you can still go and watch the one I made for Apple. There are five crucial points to fully understand Netflix journey. We have the idea, the subscription model, Blockbuster, Netflix's biggest rival once upon a time, the smooth transition and the expansion. So stick to the end of this video if you want to get the most out of it. It all started in 1997 when Reed Hastings finished watching a movie and had to return the DVD. Yeah, because it was a rental. At the time, if you wanted to watch a movie, you just had to go to the closest retail store and hope they had something you want to watch. So sometimes you could get what you're looking for and sometimes you couldn't. It's not like nowadays where you have unlimited options with streaming services and websites. So why return the DVD? The rate has been charged a late fee. Basically, when you rent a movie and you're supposed to return it on Monday, if you return it on Tuesday or Wednesday, one day or two days late, you're being charged a late fee. Reed gets annoyed and, as it often occurs in the least expected moments, an idea sparks his mind. He tells himself, what if there was a movie rental service where customers would be delivered by mail and they wouldn't be charged a late fee? Hmm. In that way, you get to choose the exact movie you want to watch and there's no late fee, even if you miss on returning. So that's the rough idea Reed Hastings has with him and his friend Matt Randolph decided to join and start Netflix. As you all can see, Reed had an idea and executed. He didn't procrastinate or waited for the perfect time, perfect moment, the perfect environment, because that's what holds us back from taking action most of the time. Yes, I mean you, you and me, you and me. Yeah, you and me. Another thing to pay attention is Riz didn't only have an idea. He had an idea he knew would provide value to people. That's it. That's it. Something that can guarantee a future to your business or activity is the value it provides to people. Netflix core offering was a curated and personalized catalog of films. Instead of storefronts which are limited, we had an online catalog having almost all the movies accessible by anyone all around the country. The delivery of DVDs were done by US Postal Service. It didn't matter in which corner of the country you found. This also helped Netflix to focus on their core offering. But like any other business, Netflix faced many problems. Problems. You know at the time there was an era called the dot-com bubble. The dot-com bubble was an exciting period on the internet where online businesses would sell consumer goods directly via their dot-com domains. Many investors were interested in these businesses and would invest crazy amounts of money simply because they saw a future in this and believed this would be the next big thing. Unfortunately, for some reasons, things went wrong. Companies like Pets.com, Cosmo.com raised funding from venture capital firms, but at each sale, these companies were just making losses. Many companies failed and the dot-com bubble crashed in due time. This is so important because Netflix was there in this period, and for Netflix to attract investors was more than complicated because all that trust and belief investors had on online business had faded away after the dot-com bubble crash. Netflix remained unprofitable till the mid 2000s. Even though they survived the dot com bubble crash, Netflix was struggling with two main problems. Firstly, delivery by mail means that 
to take three days or four days for customers to receive their shipment. Even though people were likely to try out Netflix, conversion to repeat rentals was low. And secondly, people were more inclined on renting latest releases. And we all know new movies are more expensive than old ones. And Netflix had to make 15 to 20 rentals per DVD in order to recover at least the cost of purchasing the DVD. At this point, if you're in the position of Netflix, you'll be like, damn, this is too much. You started a business that you thought was cool and you'll not be making any money from it for years. I might be thinking of pitching. At this point, you want to give up, right? Just for context, before the year 2000, Netflix was making losses of $38.6 million on revenues of $75.9 million. Man, some of us with these numbers will have quit for sure, but Netflix didn't. They took their time, figured things out, and came out with solutions that I'm going to share with you right now. One of the solutions to the problems Netflix was facing was to implement a subscription model. And the other one was a recommendation system for customers called Cinematch. The subscription model helped to improve second time movie rental rates. Customers were locked into the platform and were likely to try again. With a fee of $19.95 per month, you had unlimited movie rentals with up to four CDs at a time. A queue was also created where users could select the movies they like to watch next. This helped speed the process for subscribers to receive another CD after they returned the first one. Subscribers were more motivated in returning the CDs because they knew they received another one to watch by mail, and this retained more viewers. Remember, people were more inclined on renting the latest releases. The solution for this was Cinematch, Netflix movie recommendation system. This strategy helped Netflix to increase the utilization of their DVD content catalog. It pulled the subscribers' focus away from renting new releases to a more uniform renting out of their content library. This solution has, however, become more sophisticated nowadays and has impacted how the company decides in acquiring new content. I've been an admirer of some of the decisions Netflix has taken to overcome some of the major problems they face. Instead of opting for the fast growing less sustainable route, they opted for a more sustainable business strategy on which they could rely on long term. They could have focused on building a huge content library with all the latest releases. Instead, they worked on optimizing their existing library. Quick notice guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you like what you're seeing, please make sure you subscribe and like the video. It helps the algorithm to promote my video so that more people can see. It takes a lot of effort and work to release a video like this, a lot of research and everything. It encourages me to put out more videos like this one. If you like and subscribe, let's get back to our business. There's no way you look into Netflix's journey without coming across Blockbuster, Netflix's first major competitor at the time. When you look at the way these two companies, Blockbuster and Netflix, operated during changing times, during crisis, there's so much contrast and it's for a reason if there's only one that seems very much operational and successful today. Blockbuster was the chief of retail video rental chain in the US and they believed customers preferred receiving copies of movies in store and watch immediately instead of waiting for days. That's quite convenient, right? Remember Netflix didn't make any profit in their early years. They lost a lot of money. In an attempt to save his company, Reed Hastings met the CEO of Blockbuster at the time, John Antioco, in Dallas and tried to sell a 50% stake in Netflix to Blockbuster for $50 million in exchange for running Blockbuster's brand online. Blockbuster passed on the deal. Of course, they were in a needy position and didn't believe Netflix would ever become something since they were not profitable at the time. Netflix was like, we know we're not making any money right now, but I promise you online movie rental is is the future, I swear. And Blockbuster was like, nah, kid, we are just fine. Reader Stings and the Netflix team just collected a heavy no. It's time to make a quick decision because business is not going well. And what comes up to Reed's mind is doubling down on the existing advantages his company has over Blockbuster. So Netflix eliminated late fees, which was for Blockbuster a significant portion of their revenues. Things are not perfect, sure, but Netflix is growing. Few years later, after the failed meeting between Netflix and Blockbuster, you know, the meeting where they collected a heavy no, Blockbuster starts thinking, maybe an online movie rental business isn't that bad. So they decide to enter the online DVD rental space and also decide to remove their late fee charges. But wait, is that one of their main source of revenue? Yeah, that's how 
ready and motivated the way at this time around. But damn, this is bad news for Netflix. Their competitor, a company that has like 10 times their capital and resources is joining the online space and adopting the exact same business model. Sounds like trouble for Mr. Reeds. But here's the thing. Netflix has been around in the online rental business for a while now. So they have that experience what Blockbuster doesn't have. These sudden changes Blockbuster made is going to cost them dear. They'll have an increase in cost and reduction in revenues. It seems they can't find a solution in a period where technology is shifting at a fast pace. Can't adapt. Investors and shareholders start doubting and go against this strategy. Too much money has been spent with little or no positive result. It all becomes a mess and Blockbuster Online eventually loses momentum and later feature is, is real estate yet. On the other hand, Netflix is growing revenues and subscribers. It's quite interesting to see how Netflix moved from an online movie rental business to become a streaming service today. The transition was so smooth and I want to share with you so you can see what I'm talking about. Perhaps if it happens that your business is going through some changes, this part should be helpful on how to approach it and what to consider. Let's check it out. So in January 2007, Netflix decides to innovate and they will launch their streaming service and call it Watch Now. Maybe inspired by YouTube? I don't know. But it was around that time, around that time when YouTube was still a new thing. It was the early ages of YouTube. Streaming was really something new at the time. Netflix only had 1,000 movies available for streaming online, as opposed to 70,000 that was offered in its DVD rental service. The streaming service was more like an add-on to the existing service they provided. This would be key in Netflix transitioning from an online rental firm to a streaming service. The approach to start a streaming video service was a gradual process. The company did not roll out its service for all the users at once, instead gradually scaling up the service offerings, competing for all customers in June 2007. This slow and steady approach definitely makes a lot of sense than offering a full-fledged streaming service and then dealing with downtime and error rates. You know the internet was a new thing and streaming movies was something never heard of. This made the year 2000 one of the best years for Netflix. It was the first time for Netflix in their history to generate a revenue up to $1 billion, grow the company's subscriber base to 18% and the revenues were up by 21% and net income by 36%. Amazing. For Netflix, after transitioning, we are not stopping here. It's time to expand. Expansion often comes with partnerships and Netflix partnered with Microsoft to develop a streaming video app for their gaming console. They also later worked with Sony PlayStation and many others. This means that for Netflix, the market of 12 million Xbox Live members was open up and Microsoft could market their Xbox in front of the million Netflix subscribers. As smart TVs emerged and the prevalence of streaming video over the internet developed over the years, Netflix was essentially prepared and could offer easy integrations. Netflix also signed deals with cable TV channels like Stars. Stars library of 2,500 movies and TV shows, including movies from Disney and Sony Pictures, became available for streaming on Netflix. That was something big that could only bring more and more customers that wanted to watch their favorite movies and shows. That is a wide range of quality content all in one place for streaming. Even though most of these partnerships will stop, due to several reasons that we might see in another video in the future. These partnerships help Netflix to expose their services to a wide range of customers. Netflix streaming is the company's primary focus these days. Today, Netflix is a subscription service that gives you access to a library of movies and TV shows that you can watch on your computer, your phone, your tablet, or your TV. There's no need to wait for DVDs to arrive by mail like in the old days. Their story and their strategies has inspired me personally. That's why I wanted to share it with you. The way they reacted whenever there was adversity and competition. Instead of giving up whenever we face adversity or when times are rough, we have been taught here of finding solutions, being patient. Another point you can learn from this story is that take a look at your strengths and double your efforts on that. That's what can set you apart. So it's a lesson we all should take and learn from and apply from having an idea that can provide value taking action innovating and competing strategically 
you know, not just competing for the sake of competing, but you have to think, use your sense, and strategize by competing. So many things to take out. Today, Netflix produces its own original content for some reasons you might see in another video. Like I said, this is not a full detailed story of Netflix. Hope you learned something in this video. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, if you found it valuable. If you like to access the script and sources of all my videos, three days and four days before I drop the video, check the link down below. I'll be sharing it with you earlier before I post the video. If you haven't watched the first episode of our series, The Big Minds, check the link in the description down below or you can click right here to watch it next. Don't forget take actions make errors learn from it and don't forget to always provide value for someone out there together let's make better solutions peace